Aside from the long-awaited availability of the much-anticipated Hyper RX, AMD also launched the new Radeon RX 7700 XT and also the 7800 XT in response to NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 4060 Ti and 4070 respectively. We managed to get our hands on the 7700 XT this time, but we are only going to test the graphics card first. We are gonna leave the HyperRX feature for another time because there are currently still no games available that support this feature just yet. The card we have here is the Sapphire Pulse Radeon RX 7700 XT equipped with a dual fan design and Sapphire's angular velocity fan blades. Basically, it's their own custom fan design to improve the airflow and air pressure to further level up the cooling performance. Now, the RX 7700 XT is in direct competition with NVIDIA's RX 4060 Ti. However, the VRAM on this AMD card is actually similar to the 4070 instead. It has 12 gigs worth of GDDR6 RAM with 192 bits of memory bus. That, I think, is a good selling point for this RX 7700 XT. This is also a dual slot card and it's not too long when it comes to the length, so you can fit it in plenty of PC cases without any issues. And the power supply requirement should be a power supply that can deliver up to at least 245 watts on the 12 volt plus rail based on the total board power, TBP, but AMD actually recommends a 700 watt power supply for both the 7700 XT and also the 7800 XT if you're using a Ryzen 9 7950X. Kind of <laughs> in bar, but okay. So if you're using a CPU with a much lower TDP, probably somewhere around 120 watts range, then using a power supply that can supply up to 650 watts should be enough for both of these new Radeon cards. The display outputs might look typical, you got double HDMI and double display ports. But these are actually DisplayPort 2.1 ports instead of 1.4a, unlike what we see on Nvidia's cards. For the benchmark numbers, you can refer to the specs shown on the screen here if you are interested to know our test bench specs. So let's start off with the rest of performance. Even though the 7700 XT is advertised to be an AMD card, of course it's an AMD card. Even though this 7700 XT is advertised by AMD to be a 1440p card, we still tested it with 4K resolution anyway. And the results are rather impressive actually. It's not the 60fps that many deem as the smooth playable frame rate nowadays, but it is still actually very playable. Titles like Cyberpunk 2077, Metro Exodus, and also Watch Dogs Legions are actually playable at about 50 plus fps. The newly released Starfield, however, is not exactly pleasant to deal with with this resolution, but it still manages to perform 40% better than the RTX 4060 Ti. Scaling down to 1440p resolution, this is where the RX 7700 XT will perform the best. We are seeing at about 70 FPS plus across the board for all of the titles that we have tested. Well, except for Starfield, of course, which runs at an average of around 56 FPS, while the 4060 Ti is only averaging around 43 FPS. That means the 7700 XT still performs about 30% better than the 4060 Ti. As for 1080p, this is not a real issue for any of these cards that we have tested. Starfield is once again the only game that's not performing the best, but I would still consider it to be really good and all of the titles other than Starfield will still perform above 60 FPS average. Moving on to ray tracing performance as there's still no way for us to actually test how much you will get in terms of performance boost when HyperRx is turned on, AMD did show us the demo back in a very recent briefing at Singapore, was it? Yeah, and that demo was incredible. Let's hope that more titles will adopt the tech alongside the LSS3 so 
gamers can enjoy playing their favorite titles regardless of what GPU brand they are actually using. At 4K resolution, aside from Cyberpunk 2077, the rest of the titles tested here are actually very playable and for the first time ever, we are actually seeing better performance on an AMD Radeon GPU. Though I'll leave this for you to judge as the 7700 XT is very close to the 4070 in terms of specs compared to the 4060 Ti. As for 1440p, not only that we can see more than 80 FPS on the titles that we've tested aside from Cyberpunk, the 7700 XT is once again showing better performance than the 4060 Ti most of the time. Even at 1080p, we can actually see that the 7700 XT easily maintains above 60 plus FPS for all of the titles that we have tested, which makes the 7700 XT look like an actual viable option for GPUs at this price point. How is that possible though? Well, we have to take a look at the power draw of this card, and this is where the mystery will be resolved. We are seeing at about peak 232 watts of power draw for this 7700 XT alone during synthetic tests and actual game tests. If we compare it against its competitors, then its power efficiency is definitely not that good because the 4060 Ti and 4070 Ti only draws at around 165 and 203 watts peak respectively. The load temperature on the other hand is looking rather okay. Although the GPU load temperature is peaked at around 71 degrees Celsius during our synthetic test, actual load during gaming sessions though is around 66 degrees Celsius. The fan noise is almost inaudible throughout the entire test and yeah, we are even very close to the GPU when we are listening for fan noise. Memory junction temperature remained at around 84 degrees Celsius throughout the test which is not too bad as well. But the only temperature that I'm not comfortable with is the hotspot temperature which peaked at around 97 degrees Celsius during heavy loads and 91 degrees Celsius during gaming sessions. Though AMD still addressed this and told us that it's within their safe limits so... Mm. As the direct competitor of the 4060 Ti which is priced at 399 US dollars for the 8 gigs VRAM model and 499 for the 16 gigs VRAM model I can clearly see that AMD is focusing on the usual strategy of price over performance ratio for its Radeon GPU despite not having that power efficiency when compared to its competitors. While the overall performance is indeed better than its competition, $459 US is still not cheap and we can actually see a lot of people in the community not being very happy about its price when AMD announced it. I do agree that the price is somewhat on the higher side but at the same time it's a new option for gamers who don't feel like paying for the 4060 Ti 16GB model that doesn't actually offer any significant performance gain other than its VRAM which you are not going to utilize most of it anyway except for AI usage and whatnot. There's definitely a lot more potential that we can see in the future for these kind of cards especially when HyperRx is officially available in more games then we will also conduct yet another round of testing when we compare DLSS3 against HyperRx because it's an exciting time for this kind of AI doohickey to improve your gaming performance and whatnot. So in conclusion, just like the RTX 4060 Ti 16GB VRAM version, I'll say that the 7700 XT is a good card but a bit too highly priced at the moment. Will I still recommend this card? Well, Maybe if the game devs are actively pushing on support on the adoption of HyperRx. So that's the end of this video. Do let me know what you think about this card and let me know your opinion as well. Is this a good buy or not really? And yeah, we'll see you guys in the next GPU review video.